Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at patch 1.2.0.0. Bless Online has released a patch. It's the 21st of June. Today has only been released a couple of hours ago at this point. And it happened. We're here. We finally we got there. The patch that potentially is game-breaking for these guys. Um, and we, I'm just going to go through it. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to talk about what it means for the game, if it's good enough to save it, all that good stuff. So I have had a quick look through, but nothing too in-depth. So the first thing is the Certain Arena. Uh, new feature is a small-scale battle in which a limited number of players, 3 versus 3 from both factions, participate in a best-of-five match. Uh, players may join through the War UI. Characters of at least level 45 can join for 10 minutes for each round. So it is capped to max level, which, meh, nah, I mean your BGs are level 30, I can't see why having like level 30s in this would be a bad thing but okay it's their decision uh win can be achieved by winning three rounds or if all players from the opposite side faction die or exit the battle surely they have to die to win a round though if both factions have so is it just like a rolling system Okay, that's interesting. We'll have to go and check it out. We'll do a video on that later on. The battle schedule is 15 to 22 PDT and 18 to 1 AM CST. So, a bit of a weird times. I've heard a lot of people complaining already about the times. And, I mean, the EU region, it's kind of, it's, it's prime time. I presume the NA is the same. So, yeah, it's not the weirdest time zones, but it's certainly not. I, I don't need, I don't understand why you need to have time zones on it. Honestly, I understand the logic of if you put a time zone on it, it means that during that time you can do that. During the other times you can go and do something else. So I get that, but uh, whatever. Each class will gain an advantageous effect if they equip armor made from a specific material suitable for their class. Different classes get different effects depending on the number of equipped uh, armor pieces they have in their level. Under slash over level 30. Each class has the following effect type. So defense effect, attack... Uh, Attach, attack effect, I presume, other effects. So increase in acceleration, increase in fighting power and crit hit rate, increase in dodge rate. I presume you can only get one of these, depending on, like, armor and stuff. So, okay. Berserker, defense, increase in power rate, increase in position control rate. Uh, attack effect, increase in fighting power, other effects, increase in hit points. Just looks like generic buffs to your class based on your armor. Haven't managed to check it out yet, but we'll do a whole video on the arena coming as soon as I can get into it, basically. They've then done modified content, which is they've basically made changes to every single class, I believe. Yeah, actually, every single class. So, Zerka uh, removed obstacles that prevented Zerka from dealing damage, increased movement speed of all charge skills, and they changed the movement speed reduction from 75% to 25%. So, overall, a really, really big game for Zerkas. Not going to make a big difference in PvP because people are still going to move out of it 100% unless you have them rooted or slowed or something like that. However, it will make a big, big difference for PvE. Very, very nice change. Removes the overall post delay of some combined skills. Target skills, I'm not going to go through all these, but there's a lot of skills that have just, basically, from what I understand, they're just going to be smoother into your rotation, and that's good. They've also just flat buffed Zerka's overall skill damage by 5%. Which is really good. Uh, and they modified the DPS to ensure that DPS under level 30 is greater than 5%. Uh, maximum 20 to 30 in order to fix issues related to low level Berserker DPS. Just to help in dungeons. I didn't think Zerkas actually had any issues in dungeons. But hey. Uh, modified some skills decline in damage. Okay that's interesting. So you get more damage the higher you go again. But you get less now if you just spam it. Because some people were just like not actually charging and just spamming um, the decapitate. So, interesting. Lowered some mid-chain skills, high level damage in order to increase the post delays. So it looks like it's more important now to do full chains. Which as a Zerker is flipping hard to do. So, not sure about that. Now, these I do like. Forstall, which is their knockdown or their route that you can change to a knockdown, is now a 15 second cooldown, which is really nice. Oh, it's gone from 20 to 15, okay, with the, the max change. Uh, position switch effect, bleeding. Before, increases damage by 0.025% per 1 HP loss, which was really minuscule, honestly. After, increases damage by 0.5% per 1 HP loss... 
immunity to heal effect. This is a terrible, terrible change. This just makes that stance completely useless in PvP because you're not going to be able to heal them. So, not not sure I like this change. Again, we'll have to see what Zerkers think about it on like a, a big level, but on a top end level. But me personally, I think anything that has an immunity to healing is just terrible. Maybe a reduction in healing I can understand, but an immunity seems a little bit far. Uh, modified all ranger charge skills to allow for movement. I know this is going to be a big thing in the ranger community, actually. Uh, movement speed is reduced by 50% only when charging snipe. That's going to be a massive, massive change for the rangers. Uh, really looking forward to what that actually does to that class, because they didn't need damage, they just needed quality of life, and I think that's a big part of it. Change the range of the following skills. They've just buffed it all to 20 meters. I don't think that'll make a massive difference. Uh, remove some change skills overall post delay. It doesn't actually say what post delay is. It's not a word that's normally used for this sort of thing, so not entirely sure, but we'll we'll see. Uh, target skills, continuous fire, blah 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 blah. Different stuff. Modified some chain slash non chain skills cooldown time. So overall, looks like everything on this list took a reduction in cooldown. Interesting. So it looks like Rangers have had one. That's a huge buff. That all... I don't know how important these are because I don't play Ranger. It's the one class I really just don't play. So I don't know how important these are. But I can only imagine that... I mean, even Prudent Shot, Snipe Tactic. I know that one from, like, low-level play. It, that's going to be huge. Even five seconds is a big, big change. So interesting to see. Uh, the cooldown reduction from Node Enhancements for Control Gravity Trap, Hunting Trap. Still applied, but now reduced by two seconds. Okay, interesting. Um, nerve wreck. Change cooldown time. They just changed the cooldown time on a load of stuff. On, on to do with nerve wreck. Not sure where it is, so I can't really talk too much about it. Uh, other skills can now be used in the middle, even if all positions of rapid fire and focus fire skills aren't completely casted. Can they cast while casting? That's interesting. That may be a little bit broken if that's what I think it is. But hey, we'll have, to, we'll have to check it out. Added position control and crowd control effects to some ranger skills. Swift attack tactic added stun effect to the sudden attack tactic. Focused attack added a push and knock back and a knock down. That's interesting. So if a rangers have a lack of CC other than like a root at the moment. So giving them these if they can sort of work them into a rotation could be really nice. Uh, high angle fire stance interrupted change no tactic enhancement effect. Oh, this is the one that does more damage further away, isn't it? So overall it's just taken... Okay, so it does less bonus, but they don't have to be so far away. So you're going to... You're just going to use this all the time, really. Okay. Rangers seem to be in a really good spot then. They've buffed a lot of stuff. We'll have to see how that changes like rotationally, but... I think Rangers are going to be pretty happy with these changes. Guardian. Oh god, the outrage with Guardian. Uh, modified the Guardian's overall skill damage so the DPS is increased by 8%. Which isn't much, but... We need to remember this though. So it's 8% increased damage. And we go down here, modified some skill tactic effects in their cooldown time. So protect his position... Uh, stun effect now changed to a move speed reduction. So we lose a stun, but we gain increased duration. Whatever. Our shield upper swing is being changed to 10 seconds, which I agree with. I think it was on a too low of a cooldown. Challenge, which was our taunt, is now changed to silence. Silence effect can be increased by up to 1.2 seconds, which is really nice. But we lose a taunt. So, PvP, brilliant. But in fairness, taunt kind of did the same thing as a silence anyway, because it interrupted. Uh, and held them in CC for a certain duration. So, me personally, I think that's actually a little bit of a nerf. Dominate, which was our, I believe it's our AoE stun. Stun effect now changed to a root effect, and I believe you can change it back to a stun through node growth. So, uh, 3.5 second stun is still crazy, crazy good though. Uh, again, challenge changed to silence, and challenge changed to silence. So, having an on demand silence, which we will have in protector's position, which is our blue tank stance, really nice. However, losing our taunt just makes PvE all that much harder. And why I said to remember about that 8% increased damage modifier is that's all we have to deal with extra threat now. 
we have we have to start rotating now every single ability that gives us increased threat and even then i still don't think guardians are actually going to be able to keep aggro i just don't uh, as a mage even before the ch mage changes which we'll talk about in a second i was hitting in my first like five six shots easily for like 70 80k on on a boss a tank, a guardian is never going to be able to compete with that level of damage, and I will pull aggro every single fight. So, I don't think tanks, are, tanks as a PVE term, aren't going to be too happy. Tanks as a PVP term, having an on-demand silence and having rotation of silences is going to be really nice for shutting down things like mages and paladins. Now, let's talk about the Paladin. DPS has been significantly increased in order to make up for hunting being slow during solo play. This increase is about 30% and isn't as high as in other classes. 30% buff to Paladins? I don't think Paladins were all that slow, unfortunately. I don't think it was all that slow, slow so I'm a little bit concerned. But, okay, we'll continue. Uh, some skills, tactic effects, and cooldown times have been modified in order to make up for the fact that players could use a position control or crowd control skills too quickly. I.e. you could perma knock someone down. Uh, protection position, verdict knockdown effect is removed. So you've lost a knockdown. Immediately just knockdown's gone. It then goes on to say protection position, verdict. Uh, before and after. So I presume this is just a different skill later in the in one of the chains. Uh, now a 15 second cooldown, basically over double the cooldown. Same for disrupting position, uh, and sacrifice position is fierce strike, which is a bit weird. But uh, I don't know this without playing it. It seems that they gained a lot of damage, but they do less CC, which isn't a bad thing because they were way too strong in open world. And I think it's going to be a little bit more of a skill matchup now. They're going to... They can still have the CC, they still have it to use, but they don't have it to spam. They have to actually time it, but the damage they're going to be able to kick out is going to be significantly higher than they were already doing. So, we'll have to check that out. It could be quite interesting. Uh, Mage. It's just a flat 7% increase in damage, and I like it. But this almost counterbalances the, the Guardian's 8%, and therefore we go into the same issue of they're never going to be able to keep aggro. That's an issue. Even a 50% increase to all skills while in like one of the two tank stances for threat would be a massive change. It still wouldn't make it easy because I would still be able to pull aggro early. Crits would still pull aggro, things like that. But I think that's about the best you could get at this point. Uh, change the following Peninsula War features. Change all skills cooldown reduction effect from 50% to 15% in Season 4, so the fourth rotation. They need to just add a normal rules BG and then a fun rules BG. Even make it so they've both got like a match of the day. It's so easy to implement because they already have one system in place. It's pretty much just a copy paste without the bullshit rules. Yeah, I'm not sure about this change. It doesn't, doesn't fix the fact that it's still not a fun game mode or other ones haven't been. Interaction with the base is now possible only after the match starts. That's to avoid exploit <coughs> people exploiting and jumping off the boat at second one. Players are no longer able to put the raid into combat after an objective, loca uh, objective located in faction safe zones is attacked in the Peninsula War. I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, change the following quest features. Uh, Calandra has been nerfed. Boo. Players are now able to obtain the item Submerged Ancient Grud Grudge Extract upon completing the How to Become a Master of Armorsmithing quest. That's for the uh, the Armorsmithing profession line to become master. Yeah, I'm glad that this is finally fixed. It needed to be in a lot earlier. The Merchant NPCs at three different places will now appear at all times. I believe that's actually in front of the dungeons. Yeah, I think it is actually in front of the dungeons. Uh, remove the chances that an inserted spirit would break when a character is killed by monsters or hostile NPCs to 10%. Huge fucking change. Oh my god, such a big change. This means that when you die, each rune has a 10% chance. Which is huge, because at the moment it has a 100% chance for all of them. So even if you lose one a death, and I think that's a fair assessment. I think you have like nine pieces of armor. Maybe seven pieces of armor. But I think it's a fair assumption that if you die, you'll lose a rune. But you won't lose all of the runes. 
then we go into bug fixes and things like this um fixing so i'm not going to go too deep into things like this because it is pretty much bug fixes um they've done some translations localization things like that if you want to read through this stuff, obviously I'll put the link to this in the description anyway. I wanted to go over the main portion of this and talk about whether I think it is enough. Do I think they've done enough? Now the only notable content we've really got is the arena. Unfortunately. Now the arena will keep a lot of people entertained and I, I don't doubt it. Even if they just play it for an arena simulator, a 3v3 simulator... I think it will keep a lot of people entertained. It will bring some people back that did enjoy the game, just had no content. But is it enough? I think we need to see the raid come out. So, first of all, we need to see another patch in seven days' time. And I think that's a must. I think if they don't, we're going to go into this drought again that if it's every two weeks you'll start losing everybody on the first week and then you'll get a couple back. You won't get the full 100% that you've lost back. And I think that's just an ever-losing cycle. You you will eventually kill your game by doing that. So we need to see another patch next week. The content's already there. We just need to actually have it released and localized. So for now, it's a good change. This, this is... I mean, the arena will be popular. The class balance is a bit weird at the moment the meta is about to change again i think it's the, the rise of the rangers right now but yeah i think i think they've done a good job with this the arena coming out was a massive massive change what i don't understand is why we didn't get like the 70 v 70 bg as well considering that's the one that they announced to us as hey guys look at this and we got the arena instead which is a bit weird but hey i was looking forward to the arena anyway gonna make a couple more videos going to try and actually play through some of the classes as well um i've got three that are 45 one that's like 37 38 so i'll play through all of these and try and give you my reviews on how the class balance has changed so yeah anything else you want to know please leave it in the comments below thank you for watching and catch you later guys goodbye